Hi everyone, it's 3 something other am, I don't quite know what. Welcome to my November reading wrap up. Even though it's the 2nd of December, that being because today I got a new microphone. So if you've already seen my Hunger Games District book recommendations video, please tell me if you notice improvement in the audio quality compared to that. So I'm going to go over everything I read in November from worst to best. So this is a top 10 video because I read 10 books or finished 10 books. Some of these have been going for a bit longer than just November. Without further ado, so number 10 we have Death Note 13, How to Read. This is a companion book to the Death Note manga. It has interviews, it has uh, about how the manga was created, like the process. It goes into rehashing story events. And this is uh, my worst one for a number of reasons, unfortunately. I wanted to enjoy it because I really love Death Note and highly recommend it. But uh, there are a few problems with it. At number one being, uh, yeah, it fell apart, so that sucked. It, it's, this is brand new, I bought it from Amazon, and like the first time I opened it, the spine went <coughs> like you could hear it. And I immediately thought that's probably not good, and it didn't take long for it to do this. Second problem. Print is ludicrously small, and I know that's not uh, my eyes are dodgy problem because, well, it's not, but the print is ludicrously small and not helped by some of the contrast here. Like on these pages, you have black writing on like grey. Like, was that really necessary? It's not even like the whole book is like this. Some of it is white on black, which is fine. And some of it's black on white, but in sections like this where you've got black on grey, it makes the small print even hard to read. Was this really necessary? I don't think so. And problem number three was that a significant portion of this was just rehashing the story material. Like there was a big timeline of everything that happened in the story. Like, I guess this would be a useful reference if you're writing fan fiction or making YouTube analysis videos, but it, it just felt like padding and unnecessary. Maybe the most interesting thing in this book is the pilot chapter, but even that you can find in the Death Note short stories book, which I think would be a better investment. So that was disappointing, to say the least. Number nine is upside down. Q by Luther Blissett. This is this was just confusing. I was confused. This was a historical book, say like 16th century, like Germany, and then like later to in to in Venice in Italy. It went through like all this religious reformation, Pope conspiracy stuff. Uh Part of it is I, I wasn't as familiar with the history, part of it was people kept changing names, there were a lot of names and places to keep track of. The chronology of everything was just confused to keep track of. I didn't really get what the point of the plot was till like halfway through, like maybe the last third of it I enjoy when they got to Venice, that was the interesting part. Aside from that, it was just confusing. It was, it was just a shame because the writing the writing was fun to read. The story was just confusing and I didn't really get it. Number eight is Asian Ghost Short Stories. Uh, this is an anthology. Uh, uh, this one was fine. It's a very... Well, well, one problem was that most of it is Chinese, Japanese and Indian and I wish there was more variety in the cultures represented. There was like one Filipino story at the start, there were like maybe a couple of others. 
but yeah, I, I wish there was a bit more diversity in the culture represented. Um, this contains some old stories and a few new ones. Uh, a lot of the old stories, there were like a bunch of them written by the same author a couple of times, so a lot of them felt kind of samey. Um, there were two stories that I really liked that were the modern ones. Um, the first one was The Bone Collector, or Little Bone Collector, by Monty Lin, which is a Chinese story. And the other one I really liked was Stories uh, Our Parents Told Us, by Aida Shonibar. And that one, that one's actually an LGBT plus story, and I really liked it. So those two were the highlights, but look, this was fine, but... I wish there was more diversity and there weren't that many things here that blew me away. I picked this up because I'm really in, like into mythology and things. And yeah, this is mainly about like ghosts and those sorts of things. So I did kind of get an idea of how the different cultures view ghosts and death and the afterlife and that. Yeah. It's fine. I didn't dislike it. It just didn't blow me away. Number seven was Alita Battle Angel, the movie novelization by Pat Cadigan. I read the uh, graphic novel series of this, of um, Battle Angel Alita in July this year, and I really liked it. Uh, I haven't seen the movie, but the a novelization does deviate a bit from the original story, but it was actually still fine to read. It did feel like a little bit of a slog at times, I so I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would. But again, this was fine. Next one we have a maths book, Absolute Certainty and Other Fiction, by. Uh, I don't remember the author, by Pear Grimer. So this is in a series of books that are kind of talking about mathematical concepts um, to the everyday person. Um, so then this one's about statistics and yeah, it's good. It's, um, yeah, it goes into basic um, statistical concepts, I guess. Um, yeah, not much else to say. It was uh, a good refresher because I didn't do any statistics stuff in uni this year. Um, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's good for what it intended to be. Next one, Dracula by Bram Stoker. This needs no introduction. Um, I actually read this in the form of an email newsletter called Dracula Daily. Um, I'll put the URL in the description. Um, because this is an epistolary, which is a book that is told through letters, journal entries, telegrams, or other different formats. Um, and so Dracula Daily gives you each day's material on that specific day so if you want to read it next year it doesn't start till may so it and it goes through till november so i finished this in november hence why it's in the november wrap-up but it's been ongoing through the year since may and i thought the story was good but it wasn't for all the hype and how famous dracula is I expected a bit more supernatural stuff than there was, I guess. A bit more into the kind of lore that we associate with vampires. I don't know. Next one, where are we? Number four, I think. I'm a mathematician, I can count. Uh, Foxes by M.A. Bennett. This is the third book in the Stag series. I did a brief synopsis short on the first one um so without spoiling more on the series 
The series is good. Uh, this particular entry was a bit slow. It kind of picked up towards like the last sort of quarter. But what I like about the series is that it goes into um, history a bit. Um, this one kind of explored um, Guy Fawkes and the gunpowder plot. Uh, that's all I'll say on it because spoilers. Um, but yeah, I like how these books use sort of history and historical figures. Um, it's a modern YA thriller, if you're not familiar. So, number three, Sky Key by James Frey. This is book two in the Endgame trilogy. This is a YA thriller, sort of apocalyptic sort of thing. And I don't really know what, and it sort of, sort of uses like mythology and different cultural things, I guess. Um, but yeah, also sort of sci-fi stuff. I know there's a lot going on here. Um, and yeah, it was fun. It was a fun, it's a fun read and it's an easy read. Um, it also has all these pictures and random things. There's like this puzzle competition thing that they had going on when these books were released. But yeah, I don't know what else to say about that one. It was fun. It was good. Um, but again, it's not the first in the series, but the idea is that um, the fate of humanity or like was is decided by this huge game that all these people these teenagers who are chosen to represent their lines or people on earth uh, compete in to decide who survives and it, it's been going on for millennia we're just waiting for it to happen oh dear these are falling everywhere number two was Salem's Lot by Stephen King. This is another vampire book. And having read this after I finished Dracula, that, that's a good thing to do. I recommend reading Dracula before you read this because this one references Dracula a lot and it kind of runs on the same lore. Um, and yeah, it, it's clearly a bit of a love letter to Dracula. Um, this was one of the earliest Stephen King books. I think this is like his second one after Ca so first first novel after Carrie. Um, and this particular edition also has the Jerusalem's Lot short story, which is also in the Night Shift compilation, and also another story called One for the Road, and some deleted scenes. So if you can find this edition, this will have all of the Salem's Lot material. Um, basically, this is about an author called Ben Mears who visits his old hometown called Jerusalem's Lot, or Salem's Lot for short. Um, and there's this big spooky house there called the Marsden House where some gruesome stuff happened a long time ago. And, and there's also these two men that show up to try and start a business there. But then all this horrible stuff starts happening in town. So yeah, and it very much follows sort of Dracula-esque plot. So if you know how Dracula goes, you'll spot all of the tropes from there and here. And number one, the best book I read this month was Master of the Game by Sidney Sheldon. This is my second Sidney Sheldon book. And basically this goes through multiple generations of a rich family who got their money from diamond prospecting in Africa at like the turn of... 20th century and the majority of the people are not very good people they're not very nice people but it's fun to read them and sometimes you want them to succeed sometimes you don't sometimes you want to root for them sometimes you don't and it goes through all of the generations and how the matriarch uh, named Kate uh, yeah is well the titular master of the game and how she sees all the successive generations and as well as how she inherited her wealth in the first place and just her, her grand plan and what she's willing to do to make sure her legacy continues. And I like stories like this that go through multiple generations. And uh, 
yet it's also a surprisingly fun story considering that, like I said, most of the people are not very likeable. Yeah, it's a very fun and very satisfying story. So it was definitely, the, there was no competition. This was the best book of the month. So thank you for watching my video. Again, hope the audio quality is better than the Hunger Games video. And uh, I'll see you all later.